Okay, well, um, I want to welcome uh, everybody uh, for coming out. Uh, this is the first uh, workshop uh, of uh, Build Your Own uh, Multi-Touch uh, uh, installation uh, and uh, applications uh, here at SoCo. Uh, it's the first of a three-part uh, series of uh, workshops. And uh, just to give you an idea of the, the structure, which I'm sure you're already familiar with, uh, the first um, uh, workshop uh, is on the subject of uh, multi-touch uh, hardware, uh, and that's uh, led by uh, Lawrence uh, Muller. Um, the second uh, workshop is an introduction uh, to the design uh, process of uh, building uh, multi-touch applications, uh, that is uh, led by uh, Yuri Moose. And uh, the third uh, workshop is uh, uh, the, the uh, continuation uh, of the actual uh, programming of multi-touch applications uh, in Flash, uh, and that is uh, led by uh, Ralph. Uh, um, my name is uh, Peter Distel, so uh, welcome uh, to uh, Soko Astra. Uh, and uh, well, without further ado, uh, I introduce to you uh, Lawrence Muller. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let me introduce myself. I'm from uh, the Universiteit van Amsterdam. I've been an, I'm a Master of Grid student. Well, it's also known as uh, Computer Science. And I'm currently doing my uh, master thesis project on uh, multi-touch technology. And I'm also a free time uh, co-developer for uh, TouchSleep. Um, today, I will be explaining some uh, techniques about uh, uh, which we use for multi-touching. Both uh, techniques, uh, well, are based on the fission, so we use a camera. And I will try to compare both uh, available techniques uh, a bit. And at the end of uh, the presentation, we're going to try uh, to build our own tables. Okay, first, uh, we make a distinguish between uh, two uh, camera techniques. The first is uh, frustrated total internal reflection. It's uh, the one uh, which was presented by Jeff Han in uh, 2005. Um, and other, another technique is uh, diffused illuminations, and that's the technique we're using on these two tables at the moment. Um, well, Jeff Han presented his table in 2005 based on some uh, early research from the 80s, and um, I'm going to first take a look on how uh, the system actually is working. Um, basically, we have an acrylic uh, plate or a sheet like this one, um, and uh, we're uh, actually uh, putting light from the, from the sides into the acrylic. Uh, what happens is that uh, the light beams will reflect on the edges of uh, the acrylic. So it will kind of get stuck between the, the, the plate. But as soon as we touch uh, the plate, um, infrared light will leak out. And that's something we can capture uh, with, with a camera. It's because it's not visible, we, we really need a, well, a special modified uh, camera. Um, some uh, oh, important issues about uh, using FTIR is that if you place uh, the infrared LEDs uh, next to your sheet, you need to cover uh, uh, the first part of, of uh, your, your display because uh, on the edges, in most cases, infrared light will leak out. So that's uh, what the so-called bevels are for. Um, next, we need a diffuser, uh, which is uh, used for, well, to, uh, um, purposes. One is to prevent the camera from seeing uh, the background, and another purpose uh, is for uh, um, uh, well, letting um, the blobs uh, show up more clear on the particular spots. Um, I will show some, some images about uh, the camera later on. Um, first, we will look into uh, some improvements people have made. Uh, for example, Harry van der Veen, which is currently doing some research in Sweden, um, uh, improved the technique by adding a, a compliance surface, which is a, a silicon rubber. And he put, put some um, special projection layer on it. Uh, well, yeah, to make it uh, better, to, um, so that it worked better. Because the problem with uh, but uh, the first uh, version Jeff proposed was that if you touch the acrylic and you're trying to do uh, something like dragging, uh, the infrared light from your uh, fingertips won't be reflecting that much. So instead of 
letting uh, the, the frustrated total inf internal reflection work by uh, pressing uh, the acrylic directly. You're uh, doing it uh, through the compliance surface. And some other improvement is uh, by adding infrared blocking filter so that uh, the inf environment light uh, won't uh, disturb uh, your, your captured images. Um, these are some examples on uh, early prototypes I made. Um, left, we see uh, how it looks like when infrared uh, illuminates your fingertips. That's something we can capture. And on the right, we see, uh, well, the same, but with a diffuser. And the diffuser, in, in my case, is um, just ordinary tracing paper. So it's, it's, it's a rather uh, cheap solution. Um, next is um, the other technique, which we are using uh, here at SOCO. Um, you can distinguish it between rare illumination and front illumination. Uh, rare illumination is based on infrared light you place uh, another side of the table, and front illumination um, uses just environment lightning, such as what we do here. And, uh, well, early examples like the hollow wall and MS surface are using the rare illumination technique. Okay, let's first look at uh, rare illumination. Um, basically, you uh, create a, a same type of setup, but instead of um, um, beaming infrared light from the sides or from the edges from the, from the table, you're uh, illuminating it from, from the bottom. So what you're actually creating is uh, a glowing table of infrared light, and whenever you uh, touch the table, infrared light will bounce off from your fingertips back uh, to the camera, which we can detect as a press, or uh, well, if you place objects on the screen, those will also be displayed, and we can detect those as well. So it's kind of uh, a more sim simple and pretty good working uh, uh, technique. Um, the technique we're using here uh, is called uh, well front illumination, and. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of based on, uh, well, light and dark spots. So when uh, we illuminate uh, th this room and uh, light comes on the table, it will, in most cases, light evenly. So if you, whenever you touch the table, uh, dark spots will appear underneath your fingers because there is no light. And by inverting this image, so what, what we see here, uh, we can detect those uh, spots and process them. 